Hello, Michael here with another Redshift tutorial. Today I'm going to be having a look at displacement maps and normal maps, all in one little tutorial. Um, so you'll see here I've already in ZBrush with a uh, model, um, and you can see that I've got a low poly base mesh. I've already UV mapped this, so you'll need to go ahead and do that if you have not already done that. Um, and if you're not working in ZBrush, that's fine because I'll still be plugging these in in Maya to show you what how that all works as well. Uh, but this is, will be the target um, poly count uh, that we're looking for with our displacement map. Um, and that is what the model looks like in its entirety. I was just watching the video clip for Parabola by Tool the other day, and I thought that the character in that was cool, so I sort of modeled him. Um, so let's go ahead and export these out of uh, ZBrush. The first thing we're going to have to do is go to the preferences, go to import, export, and go to vector displacement map. Um, all these settings by default are correct except for tangent, flip, and switch. We need to change that to 47. If you don't change it to 47, the displacement map won't work correctly. Um, and this particular setting is specific to Redshift. Um, it's a different number if you're using something like uh, Renderman, for example. Um, all right, so let's jump back down to our lower subdivision level, and then let's go up to Multimap Exporter, which you can grab by getting your Z plugin and docking it, and then we'll go to Multimap Exporter. And the things we're going to have selected are Vector Displacement, uh, Normal, and we're going to also export the mesh. Um, I'm going to use a map size of 8192 um, by each other, um, just because I haven't done it before and I wanted to see what it looks like, so it's going to be pretty high resolution. If you want to see the export options per channel, so uh, per vector displacement for example, uh, you need to open up the export options, then we'll go to vector displacement map. Um, so the subdiv scheme that we're going to be creating the displacement map from will be the lowest subdivision level generally, so uh, subdiv 1. And then I'm going to have all those selected. Next, normal map, same thing, lowest subdivision. We want a tangent normal map. Um, adaptive is better because you get slightly better detail. Smooth UVs is important. Um, if you're using smooth UVs with your UV map, I believe I am, so I've got it selected. And smooth normals is really important, otherwise you'll see the low topology uh, with the normal map on top of it. So you want smooth normals, um, it, it, so it sort of applies like the Catmull Clark subdivision scheme to it and then um, uses that as its, its normal. Um, and then your mesh export, um, we're going to export the subdiv one. We want it in quads, it's in quads anyway. Um, and you want to make sure that all of these are des uh, deselected, otherwise it's going to be screwed up. Um, and that's pretty much everything. So then we can click create all maps and then export it to wherever you need to have it exported to. And we're going to call this power underscore and it's going to create our maps, and I'll be back in one second. All right, um, it doesn't like exporting maps with the recording going, so I won't do that in the future. Um, all right, so that's all of our maps exported. Let's jump over into Maya and import them all. All right, so I've already created a scene here in Maya, and I've saved it um, and set its project. So I'm going to import the model now, which, just in case you didn't know, if you bring up Explorer, grab your model file and drag it into the scene it will drag itself in. This is particularly handy when you are dragging in multiple files. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is with our model selected, uh, we're going to bring up the Hypershade Editor. We're going to create a Redshift material um, and we're going to increase the roughness to 100% and decrease the uh, reflection to zero. Select our model and um, right click on that and hold and then, oop, not graph network, assign material. So that material is now assigned to our model. Um, we can select our model and go into the attribute editor on the right hand side. We want to go to Redshift. Uh, we want to enable a tessellation. So this will apply a subdivision scheme at render. Uh, then we want to go down to displacement and make sure that's enabled. Um, for now I'm going to disable enable auto bump mapping. I'll show you what that does when I get, when I get to the render. But first we're going to connect the displacement map up. So let's go back to a hype shade editor. Um, and on the left hand side here, if we just type in disp, we'll get redshift displacement. So we're going to select that um, and we're going to plug the output into the displacement shader. Um, and under the redshift displacement node, you're going to want to have it set to uh, vector. 
and the space type set to object. Um, I know this is actually meant to be a uh, tangent normal map, but for some reason object is working correctly and not tangent. I'm not 100% certain why that is, but uh, we'll roll with it for now. Then we're going to go in the texture map, I'm going to click the checkerboard, I'm going to open a file, and then click open. We're going to go to our displacement map that we created, which will be this one here. And um, I'm just going to re graph that. And a pro tip of using a 8K map, it doesn't like doing it very much because um, I think this EXR is about 100 meg. Um, no, this EXR is 500 megabytes. I won't be doing that again. Um, all right, so uh, the texture node, if you select that, um, you'll, you'll need to make sure that your color space is set to raw if you're using an EX, EXR, um, otherwise it won't displace correctly. If you're using a JPEG or a PNG, you'll probably have it set to sRGB. A Targa, you'll want to have it set to raw as well, um, otherwise your displacement bounds won't be correct. And that should pretty much do it. So um, I'm going to bring up the um, render view now. Okay, so with our IPR running, you'll see that um, you can't really see the displacement map at the moment. It's not doing a whole lot. Um, and I super wouldn't recommend using an 8K map because it's just a little bit on the slow side, especially when you're doing some recording. Um, but the mouth looks a little bit jacked up, but that's fine. That's to be expected. Uh, the real important thing here is the height of the sort of nubby bits on the back of his head. Um, and they all look correct as you rotate it around. So that's good. Um, and as you can see, comparing it to the low poly version, um, it does quite a good job. So let's just rotate back around to the face. And we'll now connect the normal map and that will fix um, the issues with the detail on the rest of the face. Uh, actually, one thing before I do though, I'll go to the uh, attribute editor of our model. If you enable auto bump mapping, um, it's going to squeeze a little bit more detail out of your model. Um, this can be useful if you're not using a normal map in conjunction with your displacement map. And as you'll see, um, sort of just see, we're getting the, um, the pores in his nose, which were um, visible in the uh, model that I did. Um, however, his mouth does look a little bit jacked up when you have this enabled. Because um, I think it's uh, calculating the normals incorrectly. But um, otherwise, you do get a little bit of extra detail. Probably if you were doing a hard surface model, this wouldn't be so bad. Uh, but uh, with this particular model, it's not too super great. So let's connect up our normal map. All right, so back in the Hypershade Editor, um, we're just going to go over to the left-hand side here and type norm, and we're going to get Redshift Normal Map, and we're going to click that and drop it into the scene. Um, we're going to connect the out displacement vector to the bump input, um, and then we're going to go to Map and open uh, Source Images, wherever you had your particular normal map. That will do it. All right, so let's compare our renders. So that's what it looked like previous to the normal map being applied, and let's have a look at it with it applied. So you can see the mouth now looks correct. Um, and if we zoom in, we should still be able to see the pores on his nose. Sorry, it's a little bit difficult to see with this uh, particular model, but uh, and the way I've lit it, but um, yes, you can see around the bottom of the nose there where it's not getting that direct light. Uh, we're getting those pores, and obviously they're not going to be as sharp as the 1.5 million poly model, model that I had, but um, they still do the trick. And this is a 8K map, so you know um, it's not going to be perfect, obviously, um, but it's going to do the trick, depending on the topology of your model. And you can see that the uh, back of the head is still working well as well. So let's jump back around to the front, and we will call that a completed tutorial. Um, so hopefully that was easy for you all to follow. I know there's a lot of new people subscribing to the channel that are Redshift users, which is great because I'm a Redshift user and I love it. Uh, so if you want to see more Redshift tutorials, make sure uh, you are subscribed. And if there's something specific that you want me to cover, uh, make sure you leave a note in the comments and I'll have a look at doing it in the future. Otherwise, if you like this tutorial, make sure you click that like button um, and it'll help other people find it on YouTube as well. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.